Oh, g'day YouTube, how are you going? Well, we've just had our glider back from its annual inspection. We have to do that every year, make sure everything's all good. And as part of this year's inspection, I had ADSB installed. We're gonna have a look and see what's involved. Here in New Zealand, if we wanna fly in controlled airspace from December of 2022 this year, we have to have ADSB installed. The government is offering a $2,500 subsidy to get ADSB installed, so I'm taking advantage of that. Unfortunately, it's a rather pricey upgrade, about $6,500 just for the equipment, plus installation, which is a couple of thousand dollars, and we're getting about 2500 New Zealand dollars back from the government as a subsidy to help incentivise people to actually get it installed. So what do you actually get if you upgrade to ADSB? You get a transponder unit that broadcasts out your location and altitude using quite a powerful signal to any receiver that's willing to pick it up. Obviously air traffic control use this so they can see where all the planes are instead of the old fashioned radar systems that used to exist. It also has the advantage your position and altitude can be picked up by anyone else who sets up a ground based receiver. So tracking systems such as Flight Radar 24 and Flight Aware can actually pick up your location and show you where, where you are on a map. And obviously other aircraft also have ADSB in which receives any ADSB signals that are being broadcast and can alert the pilot that a potential collision is imminent which is through a system called TCAS or it can just plot your position on a screen. A lot of GA pilots around the world get a little receiver and connect it up to their iPad so they can actually see where all the ADSB traffic is near to them on their screens. All right well let's jump in the glider and have a look at the trig system that we've installed. This is basically the only legal system we're allowed here in New Zealand for our air traffic control. The trig package comes with a few variations. We had to use the more expensive certified GPS antenna which really is quite ridiculous because it's huge trying to fit this behind your panel. There's also some really strict rules around placing it at least a meter away from any other transmitting antennas. Now that is not easy in a glider when the cockpit's so small, uh, but we've done our best. The actual transponder antenna is down by my wheel well, well out of the way, not frying me. It's now pumping out 250 watts with every signal. You can get the trig in two different power units. To fly above 15,000 feet here in New Zealand, you need the more powerful unit for wave flying in the South Island. We want to go higher than 15,000 feet. So this is the main control unit for the ADSB. You can see we're currently squawking a code of 1300, which is the squawk code in New Zealand for gliders. You can turn this knob to change what number you are and press enter to go to the next number. This dial on the left changes between off, standby mode, which turns on the unit, powers it up, but doesn't actually broadcast anything. Ground, which is what you're meant to use when you're on the ground. On is broadcasting your location but without altitude and Alt actually broadcasts your location and altitude. Now you may notice it's staying on ground even though it's switched to Alt and that's because I've got a air switch installed. So here's the air switch. It has airspeed input and basically switches off at 30 knots. So anytime the aircraft is going below 30 knots it tells the transponder to be in ground mode. The trig package is made up of three units. We've got the ADSB receiver, which is much like these little puck units that you have on a normal GPS, but it's bigger, more expensive, aviation certified, and it's one reason it's bigger and more expensive is because it's got error detection built in, so much better at picking up if it's getting an accurate signal or not. Next to that we've got the GPS position source which is critical to turn your transponder unit into ADSB. If you don't have this and this and just have the transponder unit then it acts as an old fashioned radar based transponder only. And do you like my panel? As you can see we've got a lot of stuff in there. This whole thing needs a tidy up which we'll be aiming to do when we redo, revamp our panel in a future year. Well, we haven't flown for ages. Thought we'd give it a go today. 
just got the glider back from its annuals inspections and need to uh, check my new ADSB installation so I can do a little flight test today let's watch these guys take off You can see us drifting this way. So we release at 1700 feet, we're now down to 1400, arriving on the ridge. Oh, got my 15 metre tips on. It's lovely and uh, very manoeuvrable. Alright, let's see if we're showing up on flight radar 24. Oh, up we go. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't actually wanting to climb yet. Oh, it's, um, yeah, it's a very strong windy day. Oh, there's a little line of showers. That's our main problem today, is showers coming through. So I'm not planning any big flights at all. So as part of the flight test, we've got to do a number of things. The first is we've got to be in the air for at least 30 minutes. We've got to do two turns, full 360 turns, at least 30 degree bank round to the right which I've just done and now I'm doing two turns to the left 30 degrees and then we've got to do it about we've got to do a descent in straight flight as fast as possible for at least one minute so that's good I'll climb up to do that now they also ask for some slower turns so two to the right slower and two to the right faster so we'll do that 32 knots of wind up here so it's pretty impressive Actually, let's do that test now. We'll just head out over here. So as fast as possible, which is about rough, max rough airspeed, for at least one minute. So it's 1.28 now. P3 timer, one minute. Look at that view, it is stunning with a bit of light coming through and wind on the water there, beautiful. I'm just waiting for uh, Sorrel and my old glider Bravo Alpha, the DG300 to climb up here and then we'll um, head south again, we've got to get back before the rain, uh, there's, a, there's basically a front coming through and uh, it's going to be here probably in about half an hour to an hour. Right, I'm going to do a dive start and get the engine going, just make sure it's all working after it's repairs. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of sink on finals. <laughs> now I've got to get a bit of extra speed on seeing just because I've got my short wings on and last time I landed with short wings I stalled it onto the ground. Now I want to come up here by the clubhouse and so I can pin it down. I left my covers here. What luck. We'll get them on quickly before the rain arrives. Alright, thanks for watching YouTube. And hey, if you want to 
have a little sneak peek of a project I've been working on, check out puretrack.io. Don't forget if you want to support the channel, have a look at our merch store. We've got t-shirts and hats and hoodies, all great quality. Check them out.